السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To start a new series of lower line lectures I'm gonna discuss in this presentation the organization of the lower line and the front and medial sides of the thigh I'm Dr. Dario Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansoura University of Egypt The objectives of my presentation will be first I'm gonna cover the organization of the lower limb. Then I'm gonna talk about some body features of the lower limb. Then I'm gonna discuss the front of the thigh and the medial side of the thigh, the femoral triangle, and finally the adductor canal. The lower limbs are connected to the axial skeleton by the sacroiliac joints and their powerful ligaments. If you see the lower limb from the back, it is divided into the gluteal region, the thigh, the leg, and the foot. If you look at the lower limb from the front, you're going to only see the thigh, the legs, and the foot. In the lower limb, you can notice three important landmarks where you can find the neurovascular bundle move from one region to the other. As we can see here, we have the femoral triangle and the upper anteromedial aspect of the thigh, the popliteal fossa at the back of the knee joint, and the posteromedial aspect of the ankle joint, the area behind the medial malleus. The main function of the lower limb is to support the body weight. So we can see that the center of gravity is anterior to the edge of the second sacral vertebra in the pelvis, then moves slightly posterior to the hip joint, then lies anterior to the knee joint, and then anterior to the ankle joint. When the lower limb is fully extended, all the ligaments are tight and the joints are well supported. The other important function of the lower limb is locomotion and this occurs at the joints of the lower limb. So at the hip joint we have flexion and extension, abduction and adduction, and also internal or medial rotation when you move the neck of the femur inward or to the front, and also external or lateral rotation when the neck of the femur moves backwards. Also at the knee joint we have flexion and extension, while at the ankle joint we have plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. At the subtalar joint we have eversion and inversion. If we talk about the different regions of the lower limb, we will start first with the thigh. And in this cross section of the thigh, we can notice the presence of the femur. And for our direction, this is anterior, posterior, lateral, and medial sides of the thigh. So in this cross section, we can see that uh, the thigh has three outer coverings the skin, superficial fascia, and deep fascia. Extending from this deep fascia to the back of the femur, we have the medial intermuscular septum, the lateral intermuscular septum, and the posterior intermuscular septum. These intermuscular septa, together with the femur, they divide the thigh into the following compartments. The anterior compartment, the medial compartment, and the posterior compartment. The anterior compartment contains the extensors of the knee joint and the femoral nerve as their nerve supply. The medial compartment contains the adductors of the thigh and their nerve is the obturator nerve. And the posterior compartment contains the flexors of the knee joint and their nerve is the sciatic nerve. Let's revise some body features 
before studying the front of the thigh, we can see a big fossa called the acetabulum, where the head of the femur articulates inside it and forms the hip joint. Along the anterior border of the hip bone, we have the anterior superior iliac spine, the anterior inferior iliac spine. Below the acetabulum lies the obturator foramen. This is the pubic bone and uh, this is its body. Its upper border is called the pubic crest, which ends laterally at the pubic tubercle. And this triangular area called the superior surface of the pubic ramus, it's also called the pectineal surface. And this is the interior pubic ramus. This is also the right femur seen from its anterior aspect. We have here the intertrochondric line, and this line extends between the greater and lesser trochanters of the femur between the neck and the body. And this is the anterior surface of the body of the femur. If we rotate the femur and look at its back, this is the greater trochanter, and this is the lesser trochanter. Between them lies the inter trochanteric crest. Extending from the lesser trochanter downwards is the pectineal line. And this rough posterior edge on the femur is called the linea aspera, which splits inferiorly into lateral and medial supracondylar line, which terminates at the adductor tubercle. This is the right tibia, and you need to revise the following features. We have here the tibial tuberosity, extending from it the anterior border or shin of the tibia. So uh, this is its medial surface, which ends below at the medial malleus. The anterior compartment muscles, if you want to study them, start first with the sartorius, which is a long oblique muscle, divides the anterior compartment into upper medial and lower lateral parts. The upper medial part contains the iliosaurus and the pectineus, while the lower lateral part of the front of the thigh contains the quadriceps muscle, which is formed of four parts, the rectus femoris, the vastus medialis, the vastus lateralis, and deep to them lies the vastus intermedius. And for the important reason we must learn here is the femoral triangle which lies at the upper medial part of the front of the thigh. It contains the femoral nerve, the femoral artery, the femoral vein, and the femoral lymph nodes. For the sartorius muscle, it is a strap-like muscle, divides the front of the thigh into upper medial and lower lateral parts. It takes origin from the anterior superior iliac spine and inserted into the upper part of the medial surface of the tibia. It is supplied by branches from the femoral nerve and since it crosses the hip joint and the knee joint, it acts on both of them. So it flexes both the hip and knee joints and also laterally rotate the thigh and medially rotate the leg. The iliopsoas muscle, formed of two parts, the iliacus and the psoas major muscle, they are found at the upper medial part of the front of the thigh. They take origin as follows. The iliacus muscle from the iliac fossa of the hip bone, while the psoas major muscle takes origin from the transverse process and the bodies of uh, the last thoracic and all lumbar vertebrae and the intervening intervertebral discs. They pass downward below the inguinal ligament and inserted into the lesser trochanter of the femur. For their nerve supply, the psoas major muscle takes its nervous supply from the anterior rami of the first, second, and third lumbar nerves, while the iliacus takes its nervous supply from the femoral nerve. The main action of the iliopsoas muscle is flexion of the thigh on the trunk or flexion of the trunk on the thigh, as if you are trying to set or lean forward. The pectineus muscle is a small muscle, 
which extends from the superior ramus of the pubis at the pectineal surface to the pectineal line at the back of the femur. Its nerve supply, of course, from the femoral nerve, which is uh, the main nerve supply, and sometimes takes twigs from the obturator nerve. Its action is weak flexion and the adduction of the thigh at the hip joint. The quadriceps muscle, as I said, it is formed of four parts, rectus femoris and the three vasti. The rectus femoris is formed of two heads, a straight head and a reflective head. The straight head of the rectus femoris takes origin from the anterior inferior iliac spine, while the reflected head takes origin from the ilium just above the acetabulum. The insertion of the rectus femoris together with the rest of the vasti into the quadriceps femoris tendons, I'm gonna discuss it later. The nerve supply of the rectus femoris from the femoral nerve and it flexes the thigh at the hip joint since it passes above the hip joint and also it extends the leg at the knee joint. The vasti or uh, the vastus medialis, lateralis and the intermedius, they take origin from the femur. And they are inserted together with the rectus femoris into the quadriceps tendon. So we can see here the patella, which lies within the quadriceps femoris tendon. Extending from its inferior surface is the ligamentum patelli, which will hold the patella into the tibial tuberosity. The nerve supply of the quadriceps is through the femoral nerve. The vasti will extend the leg at the knee joint. The muscles of the medial compartment are arranged into layers. The most superficial one is the gracilis. At the same plane, we can see the adductor longus muscle. Deep to them lies the adductor brevis. And at the deeper plane lies the adductor magnus muscle, which is formed of pupil head and ischial head. And at the deeper level lies the obturator externus muscle. The region that we can see here at the middle compartment of the thigh is the adductor canal, which contains the femoral artery, the femoral vein, the saphenous nerve, and nerve to vastus medialis. If we want to summarize the origin of the adductor muscles, they take origin from the body of the pubis together with the ischiotropic ramus. So the gracilis takes origin from the inferior pubic ramus, the adductor longus here at the body of the pubis, the adductor previs also from the inferior pubic ramus, but at a deeper plane than the gracilis, the adductor magnus from the inferior pubic ramus and also the ischial ramus and the ischial suprasty. The obturator externus covers the outer surface of the obturator membrane and also from the pubic and ischial ramus. For their insertion, the gracilis moves downward into the medial surface of the shaft of the tibia behind the insertion of the sartorius. The adductor longus and previs to the posterior surface of the shaft of the femur. The adductor magnus, its pupil part also to the posterior surface of the shaft of the femur, while its ischial part moves downward to the adductor tubercle of the femur. The obturator externus moves behind the neck of the femur to the medial surface of the greater trochanter. For their nerve supply, the gracilis and the adductor longus innervated by the anterior division of the obturator nerve. The adductor previs from both the anterior and posterior divisions of the obturator nerve. The adductor magnus, its pupil part from the posterior division of the obturator nerve, while its ischial part from the sciatic nerve. The obturator externus again from the posterior division of the obturator nerve. So in order to summarize this, all the muscles of the adductor compartment supplied by 
the obturator nerve either from its anterior division, posterior division, or from both anterior and posterior divisions, except the ischial head of the adductor magnus supplied by the sciatic nerve. And for the action of these uh, muscles, the gracilis and all adductors adduct the thigh, while the ischial part of the adductor magnus it extends the hip, the obturator externus, since it lies close to the hip joint, so it stabilizes it and also helps in its lateral rotation. The femoral triangle, it is a triangular uh, depressed area at the upper part of the medial aspect of the thigh. It's bounded as follows, superiorly uh, by the inguinal ligament, laterally by the sartorius muscle, and medially by the adductor longus muscle. Its floor is formed of the iliopsoas, the pectineus, and the adductor longus muscle. It contains, like I said before, the femoral nerve and its branches, the femoral sheath, which contains the femoral artery and its branches, the femoral vein and its tributaries, and medial to this lies the femoral canal, which is a, an empty space containing fat and lymph nodes. The adductor canal lies on the medial aspect of the middle third of the thigh deep to the sartorius muscle, so it is also called the subsartorial canal. Superiorly, it communicates with the apex of the femoral triangle. Inferiorly, ends at the opening of the adductor magnus, it's called the adductor hiatus, and communicates with the popliteal fossa. Two muscles form its posterior wall, the adductor longus and the adductor magnus, and laterally it's bounded by the vastus medialis. And of course its roof is made by the fascia and the sartorius muscle. It contains the continuation of the femoral artery, the beginning of the femoral vein, the deep lymph vessels, the saphenous nerve, which is a branch of the femoral nerve, and nerve to vastus medialis, and also the terminal part of the obturator nerve. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share, and do not forget to hit the notification bell so you know if I upload another video.